Uh, greetings, dear church. Uh, what a wonderful day we had today as we could all intercede together for this country of ours and ask the Lord to have mercy on us for however much longer he determined for this country of ours. And we know that the only way we can, God can have mercy is when we repent before him and walk humbly before the Lord. And in, in continuation of this topic that we had earlier in the morning, I'd like to share a little bit of a few thoughts also about prayers, about our prayers. And this is actually streaming stri- straight from the text that we're going through today from Philippians chapter 4. And this is, we're going to finish the last section as we've been going through this verse by verse for a while now. Today we're going to be going through the last few verses here together. Let's read Philippians chapter 4, verses 18 through the end. Philippians 4, 18. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory, by Jesus Christ. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Today I would like to draw our attention to specifically verse 19. This is a very powerful promise of God that I think we can all draw something for ourselves. If we focus how how the Lord cares for us and how much he he has planned for us and all we have to do is ask the Lord. So verse 19, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. Бог мой да восполнит всякую нужду вашу по богатству своему в славе Христа Христом Иисусом. So this is a very powerful promise that I think most of us have heard during our time or when we have read through the Bible. And this promise is what I would like to share a few thoughts about today. So my, my, my sermon is titled, God's Promise of Meeting Our Legitimate Needs. Legitimate Needs. We all have needs and we have wants and desires but this is only reference to the needs that we have as Christians as believers those that love God and we we know that God loves us and wants to meet our needs whenever they arise so this is a great promise to believers who are struggling in their circumstances and we see Paul was definitely in a difficult situation he was in jail in prison he didn't know whether he would live or die the next day but instead of caring about himself, he's caring about others, the church, the Philippian church that cared for him through this love offering that they gave through this man, Epaphroditus, in order to bless Paul. And Paul turns this around and says, you will be blessed. All you have to do is trust in the promise of God. So the question that we, we probably would want to ask is, why, why would we even have these needs? Why would God supply all our needs? Or why would God just not anticipate what we need and just give us things in advance? Why should we as believers even have these needs? Why does God allow these kind of difficulties to arise in our life? And the answer to that is, of course, to, uh, to show us that we are completely dependent on God. That if, we, if everything was perfectly in our life and we never had any needs that arise, we would think that we can, we can survive on our own. We would think that we could do everything without trusting in God. But that's the exact purpose that God gives us these needs. And especially in this time when a lot of people have lost their work, a lot of people have uh, been displaced, a lot of people don't have the same anticipation of the future. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So we're, we all have needs, but God is greater than any need that we will ever have, and he will meet those needs as long as we meet a few conditions, and that's what we will talk about today. So I have just three things I would like to share from this verse here, verse 19. The first point is that the promise is personal, 
but conditional. There's two parts to this first point, personal but conditional. So when we say it is personal, how is this a personal promise? Look how Apostle Paul refers, he says, but my God, very, very personal. He doesn't say our God, it doesn't say your God, because in the, that whole area of, uh, of Asia where he was writing to, there were so many idols and gods that people would say, which God are you talking about? He made it very specific. The God that I know, the God that met my needs before is the same God that will meet your needs. So when we have a crisis of faith or something in our life, that's when we really learn who God is and that we really need him in that time. And Paul knew God personally and knew that he would uh, meet the needs of this church, that they gave so much that it's possible that they, pers they themselves became needful because they knew that Apostle Paul was in need and they wanted him to continue to spread the gospel. So no matter what the need is, God is always greater than our need, and that's what we should never forget. He says, my God, who will provide for your needs. And then the second part here, we see that this is a conditional promise. And if we look a little bit ver uh, higher, we will see that in verse 15, Apostle Paul says, Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving but and receiving but ye alone. So only this church supported him. So he's based on the fact that they supported him and they did so much for the gospel, then this promise applies to them also. Because we remember how what Jesus taught in, in the gospels. When we look, when Jesus was still on, on the earth and he walked and taught his disciples, he said, uh, Luke 6:38. He said, give, and it will be given unto you. So talking about when you would go to the market and you would bring a basket and, and it would be good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over so much that it was overflowing that you would have to catch the remnant in maybe your, your blouse or whatever he had, that it was overflowing. That's how much he says, Jesus says that it will be given to you. When you so he says, for whatever, the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So Jesus says, give, and it will be given. So whatever you sow, you will reap. It's the same, uh, same rule that applies here. So the same portion we use to give will be given when we receive. And we also see that another thing that makes it conditional is that the need has to be good. God will not just answer any, any kind of request that we have based on our desires at that moment. It has to be a true need, and it has to be a good need, good for us at that moment. So if a 12-year-old girl comes to their parents and says, I need a cell phone, he comes to the parents and says, please, I need a phone. Well, that might be a want or a desire, maybe even a lustful desire, but it's not a need from the perspective of God because it's something she wants, but will that be a benefit to her or, or uh, opposite? Will it be something that will cause her to stumble? So God might withhold that need, that, uh, that desire she has because he knows in the future it will cause her more pain. So God will give us the things that are good for us. So if we knew everything that God knows, we would, be, we would uh, always be happy with the way he answers our prayers because he, he knows what is good for us and we don't know everything, but God knows everything. So when he says no or he says wait, we should always be thankful because how many times has God said no to us and then a few years later we see what kind of a difficult uh, situation we would be in if God answered all our prayers. Now if we look back maybe when we were in high school or maybe the younger days when we maybe liked somebody and we, we Pray that the Lord, please show that this person help uh, make things work out for us. And God didn't answer that, and nothing happened. And even though you really wanted to marry that person, but a few years later you see that that person turned out to be exact opposite of what you really wanted. And that person, you see how much pain you would have in your life if God truly answered that prayer. But Isaiah says in his uh, prophecy, Isaiah 30, 18, he says something really important. He says, blessed are those who wait for him. Blessed are those who wait upon the Lord because 
God will always give something better when we wait than if we want something at this moment. So if our heart is in the right relationship with God, we will not be asking for something that is bad for us. Because, you know, when we're walking close with God, we'll be seeking those things that are, will be pleasing to the Lord. But if we're far away from God, we'll oftentimes ask things that will, in, in the long run, it will be uh, hurtful to us if God gave us those things. So our greatest need, when we look at humanity oh, from for thousands of years, the greatest need of humanity was salvation. Salvation from hell and being placed into eternity with Jesus Christ. And think about God met that need. That's the greatest need that we could have ever had. And God, he gave up his son so that he could come and suffer and die for us. And in that act, he met that need. So when we think about if God met the greatest need that we could have ever had, how much more will he meet the small needs of providing food, clothing, shelter, maybe a job, something uh, personal, some kind of healing that we might need. God can meet those needs very, uh, very easily. If we look at what Paul says to the Romans, Romans 8.32. He says this similar idea of what we just talked about, that God met the greatest need we could have ever had. Romans 8.32 says, He who did not spare his only son but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So if God met the greatest need, then everything below that is easily going to be met. If, if we are walking close, we will be asking the things that are pleasing to the Lord. We will not be asking for something that will hurt us in the long run. Second point I would like to share with us here is that the promise that we're talking about is the promise seeks our encouragement and at the same time our development. It encourages us and it develops us as Christians. So the first part of this is how does this promise encourage us? We see Apostle Paul is encouraging the Philippian church by saying God will meet your need. But let's think about it this way. What if we would pray over and over again, and God didn't answer any of our prayers. And it many months passed, years passed, and God never answered our prayers. We would get very discouraged. We would think God doesn't care for us. We would think that something is wrong, and we would be discouraged. But when God answers our prayers, that gives us encouragement that he is the God that cares. As Peter says, casting all your cares upon uh, God, uh, upon him, for he cares for us. He cares for us. So Whenever God answers our prayers, it actually gives us great encouragement and it makes us stronger for this, the next time around. We, when we have another need that comes up, we have more faith to trust in the Lord that he will provide in his time. Also, how does this promise that we, we're looking at here, how does it develop us as Christians? What does it do to us when we have needs and then we come to the Lord and beg him and, and just like a, a child would come to his father and say, I, I need this, Lord. We humbly fall before the Lord and say, understand that nothing, nobody else in this world can meet this need. Only God can. It develops us as Christians. So God creates needs in our lives individually or even as a church here so that we can develop in faith, and in, in a good character, a character according to the scriptures. So let's look what Peter says in his letter, 1 Peter 1, 7. It's talking about how the fire refines this gold and makes it something so much more desirable. Whenever you first find gold in the, in the dirt, it's, it's not beautiful. It has many imperfections. It's covered with other rocks, with dirt, with uh, other metals, and it needs to be refined. And that's what God does with us when we... We have these needs, we pray, and God makes, makes us more into the character of Jesus Christ. So it says here that the trials of, our, of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So the trial of our faith, God wants to make us more and more trust, trust more and more in the Lord for things that arise and not to trust in people or to not even to trust in a president because if we put all our hope or all our faith in one person, we will be very, very disappointed. But if we trust, put our faith and trust in the Lord, he will never disappoint us. 
So the promise does not only apply towards uh, financial needs, it can also apply towards different kind of needs, maybe uh, emotional needs. Sometimes we are very much in need of a companion, a friend that we can share with, and we, we have maybe somebody doesn't have a friend and they ask the Lord and he will provide somebody.